Picked by a lucky draw is Mr. Harry Bernstein from Glasgow, Scotland. Mr. Bernstein, if you match the person we call on the telephone, you too will split $1,300 today on the match game. And now here's the star of the match game, Gene Rayburn. Okay, as Johnny pointed out, $1,300 is the amount we're going to try and give away today with our telephone match, and we'll get to that a little bit later. Right now, let's meet our celebrity team captains. Uh, it's a special day for us here today. We have all New York Yankees. Well, almost all New York <laughs> Yankees. Let's meet the uh, captain of the pitching New York Yankees. Here's Whitey Ford. Whitey Ford. You know Ed McMahon, uh, Whitey. We were supposed to have another pitcher in that seat there, and somehow it just didn't uh, happen. But, Ed, we're delighted that you were in the vicinity, and we were able to grab you at the very I was uh, down the hallway pitching pennies, and somebody said, you're a pitcher? Come on up. <laughs> well, we're very happy to have you here. And Steve Hamilton, we're delighted to... Uh, this is your... <laughs> yeah. Get a tight shot of Steve Hamilton there. He's got a little something he wants to show you there. Go. <laughs> Do you do that when you're out on the mound, Steve? Not very often. Not very no. often. You've got a heck of a team. <laughs> yeah. All right, good luck to Whitey and his teammates. And uh, now let's meet our other celebrity team captain. He has a, a legitimate group of ball players with him. And we'll say hello to them in a moment. The captain now, Mickey Mantle. Mickey. These fellas are well known to you, Mickey, and uh, we've had one before, Steve Whitaker. We've never had you on the game before, no, have I haven't we? But time. you're pretty familiar with it, aren't you? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Boy, I don't know uh, what he looks like on your tube at home, but here on my monitor, Steve is a very handsome-looking fellow there. I don't mean to embarrass you. But... <laughs> And uh, you're, uh, over to your right, Steve, is Tom Tresh, who's been with us on several occasions. Are you all warmed up and ready to go, Tom? I hope so, Gene. Okay, good luck to Mickey and his teammates. And now we'll begin with this assignment. Remember, the object of the game is to match your teammates. Good judgment will usually do that. Number one, write down something you say to an umpire. And, Ed, you're going to have to think like a ball player here. <laughs> write down something you say to an umpire. <laughs> and something that we can print. <laughs> right now, while they're doing that, we'll look in on a lady. The first assignment was write down something you say to an umpire, and since we have all ball players here but one, that ought to be easy, I suppose. Uh, Steve Hamilton, what do you say? You bum. You bum. All right. What do you say? I wrote down we Mr. Said, first. Mr. Mr. Yeah, try to get friendly, but then I put down, are you blind? Are you blind? All right, Whitey? You stink. <laughs> <laughs> We've said so many things, Gene. It's, it was a tough Hard question. Isolated. It is a tough question. Let's see if Mickey's team scores with this one. Tom Tresh. You ever fight with an umpire, Tom? Never, never. Never. But if I would, I'd probably say you're blind. You're blind. That was really a ball, not a strike. Steve Whitaker, what do you say? I was safe. I was safe. <laughs> Mickey? That's what I said, too. I was safe. Oh, There's there a man. Go. 25 points. I dare say, however, you would not say it in the gentlemanly, well-modulated voice you used here, would you? <laughs> what do you mean I was saying that? <laughs> now complete this sentence with one or more words. John never played baseball without his lucky blank. John never played baseball without his lucky blank. You ever play ball, Ed? Yes. Where? Very badly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was a football player. I was not, not very good at baseball. Yeah. Never too good at that. All right. Well, in college. Many, many years, years ago, we yeah. had a round ball, and it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Steve? I said shoes. Uh, His geez. lucky shoes. Yeah, there was a play written about that. What'd you say, Ed? I said charm. His lucky charm. 
which he wore in his bracelet, and the fellas kidded him. <laughs> yeah. in the I agree Daddy's with the football player. Charm. Thank you for that. So they score once. All right, Tom Tresh, what do you say? Well, I thought he wouldn't play without his lucky bat. Lucky bat? Many of the fellows are superstitious about that, aren't they? Steve Whitaker. I say glove. Lucky glove? That's another one. Mickey? I'm a glove man, too. Lucky glove is a man. Now we're away from the uh, baseball questions, momentarily at least. Write down a sound you might hear on Old MacDonald's farm. A sound you might hear on Old MacDonald's farm. Do you know what we're talking about, Steve? Uh, Old MacDonald had a farm. Ring-a-ding, ding, ding, ding. All right, ready over here? All set over there? Okay, Steve Hamilton. Well, I'd, I'd probably hear a chicken first. You'd hear a chicken? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Uh, what do you I'd say? hear a moo. You hear a moo with a moo-moo yes. here and a moo-moo there. Whitey? <laughs> oink. With an oink, oink here and an oink, oink there. A noisy farm. Yes, it is. What's the first one in the song? A cow, I think. They're all over the place. All right. Tom Tresh, what, what sound do you hear on Old McDonald's? Moo Moo here. With a Moo Moo here and a Moo Moo there. Steve? Thanks, I must really be wrong. I was thinking of a cowbell. A cowbell? <laughs> <laughs> you never even heard of the song, did you? <laughs> but Old McDonald there. Mickey, what did you say? I had a quack quack. <laughs> <laughs> you sound just like it, too. <laughs> All right, 50 to 25. Mickey's team is ahead. Next question. Now, sir, in a few minutes, we'll be playing our telephone match, which is worth $1,300 today. So now, Mr. Harry Bernstein of Glasgow, Scotland, uh, give us your answer to this. Name something fattening. Name something fattening. He's got an idea, and he's putting it on that uh, card and making a lot of noise. There's a squeaky pencil we gave him. Now, if Mr. Bernstein's uh, answer matches the answer we get from our telephone player in a few minutes, they will split the $1,300. And he's putting it in the envelope now, and he's all set. Okay. Now we'll go on with this group here. We're in game number one. Name something you would pack if you were going to Florida. Something you'd pack if you were going to Florida. While they're doing that, I'll ask uh, Steve Hamilton down here. What's your hometown, Steve? Moorhead, Kentucky. What's that? Moorhead, Kentucky. <laughs> Moorhead. Right. I see. Has an interesting manner of speaking, doesn't he? Does it remind you of some, uh, someone, someone? How, how, did you live there most of your life? Yes, sir, I lived there all my life. You did? <laughs> <laughs> It's a very young life. You're a little prematurely gray, are you there? Steve? Yeah, I'm really a lot older than I look. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold your card up there, Steve. I put down swimming trunks. Swimming trunks. Yes, sir. Good idea. Ed? I have the same thing. I call it bathing suit. Well, it's the same thing, so there's 25 points. What do you got, Whitey? I put golf clubs. Down. Golf clubs. You'd pack I'm not those much and take them. He's, he's a golfer. All right, over to Mickey's team now. Tom, what would you take to Florida? <laughs> Swimsuit. Swimsuit. Steve? <laughs> yes or no? No? Suitcase. You pack a suitcase. <laughs> I don't know about you, but the picture that recalls to me is here's a guy standing there. He's got a small suitcase and he puts up a big suitcase. And he closes that and packs it up and he keeps packing suitcases. And... How about you, Mickey? And a swimsuit. So there's 25 points and you're up to 75. <laughs> Complete this sentence with one or more words. Mary told her blank everything. Mary told her blank everything. All right, Steve and Ed are ready over here. What are you doing there, Tom? Okay. Oh, you're finished. Oh, I didn't see your head. All right, Steve Hamilton. Go. Well, I think Mary told her lamb everything. Mary and the lamb. <laughs> uh, uh, 
I don't think you're going to be too proud of you in Moorhead, Kentucky, this day. All right, Ed, what do you say? Would you like a little rubber duck to play with while we're going? Told her mother everything. Told her mother everything. All right, Whitey. I said husband. Told her husband. Everything. Now, one on Mickey's side will win the game. Tom? I thought she'd tell her husband, too, Whitey. All right, Steve? I said a boyfriend. Her boyfriend. Mickey? I said her mother. Her mother. <laughs> so there's no match on uh, either side there. Yeah, Try this. Yeah. Name something that comes in a bottle. <laughs> Name something that comes in a bottle. Now, if you, uh, you know... Yeah, I'm just trying to second guess. No. Moorhead, Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> Winning um, the game is more important that's right. than uh, business loyalty. All right. Uh, let me put it that way. <laughs> but whatever you think your teammates will do, hands down on this side. We'll begin over here as soon as you're ready over there. Okay, Steve, they are ready. Well, since we're athletes, I figure milk comes in a bottle. Milk comes in a bottle, and you athletes drink a lot of milk. Ed? That was my third choice. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's a match, Whitey. It was my second choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now you need one to tie there, two to win. Go, Tom. I put uh, soda pop. Soda pop. Steve. Well, I might be the villain here. Yeah. I put beer. You put beer. <laughs> nice going, Steve. Yeah. Uh, Mickey? I had Coke. So the lady side wins the game. What a comeback. You know, sometimes old friends can... And Mr. Harry Bernstein will try to match his answer with someone at home on this telephone. But first, for nagging backache from stress and strain, here's a word about Jones Pill. In the phone call is ready. We're calling Portland, Oregon, and Mrs. Doris Bowder is on the line. Hello there, Doris Bowder. Gene Rayburn match game here. Hello. hello. Are you there? Yes, I sure am. You sure have a nice low voice. <laughs> you know, your number was selected at random from the phone book, and I'm going to ask you the same question that was asked of Mr. Harry Bernstein here of Glasgow, Scotland, in our studio, and if your answer is match, you'll split $1,300. That's uh -huh. all there is to it. Now, it's your first answer that we'll have to accept, and it must be an exact match. Good luck to you, and here we go. Name something fattening. Name something fattening. What is your response to that, uh, Mrs. Bowder? Butter. Butter? Is, are you correcting my pronunciation of your name? Butter? No. <laughs> oh, butter, B-U-T-T-E-R, is your answer. Something fattening, now. You mean something in the way of food. Well, whatever. You know, whatever. whatever you think. Butter is your answer. We have to accept your first one. Mr. Bernstein says butter. Stein, Steen, why then uh, you split the $1,300. May we see it, please, sir? Starch. Starch. He had sugar, scratch it out, and put starch. He said butter, so you do not match. And we're sorry about that. However, you will receive the Sturbridge Decorator Clock from West Clocks. I think you'll enjoy that. Thank you, Mrs. Bowder, for playing. Right oh, Bye. <laughs> Tomorrow, or Monday rather, someone else in the studio audience and someone at home will try for $1,400. Is that as high as we've been? It is. We'll be calling someone somewhere in the country. Remember, one of these days we might be calling you. All right, Whitey Ford's team now for the audience match from the week of April 17th. Sometimes the date has an effect on an answer. Just wanted to give you that. $50 every time you match the answers given most often by a hundred people here in the studio. Number one, name the team you think will win the American League pennant this year. Yeah. Now, Steve, I must I'll, tell okay, you... Okay, okay, I understand what you mean. Here. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. And, and you see this group here, they're predominantly ladies. Right. And uh, what do you think they said? Team that win the American League pennant? That will win it this year. If they're predominantly ladies, I'd say they would say the New York Yankees. All right, if that's your judgment on their answer, that's it. Ed? Hmm. He was right on the milk. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go with him on the game. All right. Whitey? 
I have to stay with Baltimore, whether they're men or women. Yeah, because they won it last Baltimore year. Baltimore Orioles, I'd say. Ladies might have said it this year. All right, the answer they gave was Baltimore Orioles. Whitey is right. <laughs> okay. You can win them all after the show. We'll have a beer and forget them. <laughs> <laughs> Name the team you think will win the National League pennant this year. Uh, how would they have responded to that, Steve? Um, it's a little tough uh, since you say you're thinking about what they did last year. Uh, it might be different from us. I, I would say that uh, they'll say the Pittsburgh Pirates. Well, that's kind of... Uh, you really think these people would say that here? You want me to change that? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll say the Dodgers. You'll say the Dodgers. Yes, that's up to you, Ed. <laughs> I'll go with the Dodgers. All right. The uh, San Francisco Giants. The Giants. All right, the answer given by that group was... Dodgers, Los Angeles Dodgers. There's another hundred dollars. You know, that's the first time Whitey has been wrong in a long time. He's been very good at this audience match part of it. All right, try this one. Name the best looking ball player. Name the best looking ball player. Now, remember this is one day during the week of April 17th, and it was an average audience such as we have here today. What do you think they said, Steve? Don Drysdale. Ed? How about Koufax? Whitey? Well, Koufax is a retired... Uh, well, they... say Mantle. <laughs> Mickey Mantle. <laughs> <Hey! laughs> He's a good-looking guy. <laughs> In my opinion, anyway, and he's got a, he's a very personable... Of, of the older player. players, I mean, Gene. Of the older players. <laughs> 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 Was All he right. handsome or good-looking? <laughs> the answer they gave was... Mickey Mantle is right! Mickey Mantle is right! Very good there! So another 50 and a grand total of $300. We've got very little time. That's, well, we've got very little time is right. There's a whistle. Here's a word about another fine product from the folks at Borden's. I choose you, Pete. Well, uh, we thank Tom Tresh and uh, Steve Whitaker, two of the many distinguished New York Yankees, for being with us again. Tom, it's nice to have you back. And Steve, we hope to have you back here again sometime. I know you didn't win a game here today. However, your team captain was voted the best-looking ball player out of 500 <laughs> players in the major leagues, and that's something. You ought to pay for that one, right? What's that? You ought to give us a little I ought to pay you a little yeah. something for that one? <laughs> 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 Thanks, Mickey. We'll see you back here again as a team captain sometime. Now, let's see what we've got here. You won uh, the one game that we did have a chance to play, so therefore it was $300, and that was neat, neatly done there. What's uh, the name of that fellow who uh, does an imitation of you? He works in television. Gomer Pyle. Gomer Pyle. <laughs> I tell you, how, what's the population of that town? Uh, Moorhead? Yeah. 4,000. 4,000? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how long has it been since you've been there? February. I see. Well, it's great to have you, Steve. Ed, again, our sincere thanks, and Whitey, we'll see you again soon. Have a nice weekend. Join us Monday for $1,400. Bye. Contestants in our telephone match will receive from Westbox an authentic reproduction of early Americana, Sturbridge, and Oak Court transistorized...